Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Greg Bogart here who is going to be talking to us about a very um, important astrological occurrence that is happening in our very, very near future. Um, I I stumbled upon Greg because I was reading about um, uh, um, Saturn and Jupiter being in conjunction. That started, I think, a couple of weeks ago around Thanksgiving. And that will happen something I read someplace in your article, Greg, I don't remember all the details, but something that will be happening as of December 20th. And I was wondering if you can tell us all, because it seemed like pretty important because this hasn't happened. You had written um, in one of the articles, you said it's an event that sets a tone and direction for the next 20 years. So I figured I better pay attention. <laughs> so so welcome. Um, Greg is um, an astrologer, psychotherapist in Berkeley. He also teaches at Sonoma State University. And he's um, going to be talking to us a little bit about some excerpts from his newest book, Astrology's Higher Octave. So welcome. Thank you, CJ. Glad to be here. The, uh, the big event you're talking about is the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn on December 21st. Okay. And the exact degree where that happens is zero Aquarius, 29 minutes. So it's in the very first degree of the sign of Aquarius. And these planets come into conjunction once every 20 years. And indeed, it does set a tone. These are the planets of constructive social activity. These are the planets that have to do with how we get it together in the world in terms of <laughs> planning, structure, and accomplishment. And so as they form a conjunction, there is an opportunity to uh, focus one's energy in a particular zone, depending on which house it's falling in in your natal chart, planets that it aligns to, it gives you the chance to make formative decisions, commitments in a certain area of activity that will tend to be the focus over a 20 year cycle. So yeah, it's really important. Now it's not yeah. the only significant transit of 2021. We're also going to have Uranus square Saturn. So there's a lot of structural tension and reorganization uh, happening. There's a lot of unemployment happening. There's a lot of change in the paradigm of governance that's coming in. But in terms of Jupiter and Saturn, if we can make the feeling of Jupiter and Saturn a part of ourselves, if we can plan, set goals, have clarity about what our enterprise is, what it is that we're most uh, interested in putting energy into to see grow mm. in the coming years. Now, what uh, um, the, that you mentioned is that in the beginning of COVID, something happened as well. Um, I can't remember. Well, so let's step back. The, the COVID pandemic broke in the spring. There were probably earlier cases, but in March and April, we had a four planet conjunction in Capricorn. Oh, wow. So Saturn and Pluto have been conjunct all year, and then Jupiter joined them, and then Mars. Okay. So in the spring, this powerful conjunction, Mars conjunct Pluto set in motion this very virulent uh, disease. So it intensified infectious process, it spread it. Mm, and mm. over the summer, since August, Mars went into Aries and square has been squaring Pluto and Saturn. Mm. So we're right in the tail end of that through the end of January, uh, end of December and into January, Mars making its final square to Pluto and Saturn. So it does correlate with the surge that we're in the middle of where our numbers are still climbing. Uh, so um, Pluto conjunct Saturn in 2020 has represented imposition of controls, <laughs> necessary contraction, enduring difficult circumstances and much inconvenience, people facing various adversities, having to be tough and survive and just get into, you know, having enough food on hand, having enough warmth, having, having the basics to get through this. So that's the Pluto-Saturn conjunction of 2020. But now at the end of the year, we do have a 
positive tide of leadership coming in with a, a new administration to take a different approach, hopefully get us more on the same page about what we have to do. Uh, so anyway, that's the uh, transit that uh, you were reading about. Okay, uh, got it. So the, you could have looked astrologically and said something, four planets all together, something big you is definitely going think it was a point of tension. Right. A stress point. Yes. And what does it mean now? Um, what what can we predict? You're saying in January, it seems like it would have been, it's not surprising when you look astrologically that would happen, that we'd have another peak. Is that right? And is there anything else hopeful or helpful you can tell us about what to expect for 2021? As well, the first thing is, I, 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 I in no way feel like I can predict what's happening with uh, anything with uh, uh, an epidemic, a pandemic. But the planetary energy of Mars square Pluto feels like intensification, uh, more, uh, more spread. But on the other hand, it could intensify the need for management for the right management of the public health. And that's where Pluto in Capricorn, you know, we hope mm. is uh, the strength of competent people and getting people to adhere to basic protocols for being out, you know, around uh, other people to try and um, slow it down. Mm. But anyway, that's about as much as I could tell you, just that Mars okay. square Pluto feels like, you know, it's important to raise our energy, to have strength, to have power, to um, also have the power of self-control, the power to stay inward, the power to stay self-contained. We have to mm. be satisfied in solitude, satisfied mm. in our shelter. Mm. And so meditation, yoga, looking inward. And mm. also, then we have the meaning of Jupiter and Saturn entering Aquarius, mm -hmm. the sign of social awareness, mm. social change, social action. So it orients people differently. The last Jupiter-Saturn conjunction in the year 2000 was in the sign of Taurus. Mm. So the, the, the background tone was about prosperity, was about generating wealth, was mm. about also coming to terms with uh, planetary ecology crisis, all, everything about the physical world. This is a conjunction in Aquarius. So we have to increase the intelligence of our social institutions, social networks. It's a new time. And uh, I think bearing the tension of the Uranus Saturn square that's coming through 2021, we also can make constructive choices. Mm. And so it's a question of where does this conjunction affect your chart? Mm. What is it asking of me? Mm. Okay, so so basically, um, when Jupiter and um, and um, Saturn are conjunct in Aquarius, the general you know feeling overall is about social um, social um, social change. So this is actually something that, again, we could have looked at the astrology. Said something is going to change. There's some type of um, collective thing that is happening during and what period are we talking about because it only happens during a short period right so the conjunction is december 21st but you can feel it already they were already close in the sky so we've been if you're feeling momentous changes in your life already yeah you're already in this conjunction the exact oh. date is uh, december 21st in January, they're still close together. And then in February, we have five planets in Aquarius. Oh, okay, so what does that mean? It's, it's, a, it's a powerhouse <laughs> transit. It's Sun, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn in Aquarius. It means it's important to link up to groups. It's important to think about what is the social meaning of whatever you're doing? How does it affect other people? Mm. And... 
Um, how can we change our social structures by changing how we act? Mm. Changing our alliances. So uh, it's wow, it's powerful, <laughs> powerful shift, and hopefully a more progressive consciousness. Because yes. really, you know, in the Trump years, we've had the cutting back of a lot of helpful regulations to protect the environment. We've had um, uh, conservatism in certain other trends and and so aquarius is very progressive it's progressive social evolution mm -hmm. and if we think of whatever our area of activity how does this link me to others or to a social purpose mm -hmm. uh it, it is more meaningful to experience the conjunction in that light so for me just as an example I operate in the field of mental health. I have a concern about the societal problem of depression. Mm -hmm. That's an area I've done a lot of research about. And I'm interested in natural antidepressants. I'm, I'm interested, I'm concerned about the problem of over-reliance on medications to bear the problems of life and depress mm. uh, conditions. And I think there are better ways. Mm -hmm. So. That's something I've been very committed to as a social issue. It's like mm. we could get people to exercise consistently, eat better, Meditate, more yeah. food, get their sleep cycle regulated, heal the problems in their families and relationships, and meditate and do yoga, breathe, and return to their alignment with the source. Mm. and also doing dream analysis mm. okay so that's what it would look like for you in terms of as this period comes about it's like doubling your effort so i actually when the next segment want to talk a little bit about you know we've talked about um in the broader context what would be happening in the next segment let's just talk about looking at um let's focus on you i also have my astrological chart so that people can kind of figure out like what how can I be, um, in one of the articles um, that you wrote, you were talking about being conscious. Like, how do I be conscious during this time mm -hmm. period to to positively affect the next 20 years <laughs> of my life? Okay, so we'll be back. Um, we've been talking to Greg Bogart, who is the author of the book, Astrology's Higher Octave. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan.